We have some more information about the 12 year old boy who was found dead lying on his back with his knees in the air at the Trails Carolina Wilderness Camp last month. And also some of the former campers were interviewed and it's not good. One of the staff members that was interviewed said that the 12 year old boy had arrived and claimed that he was loud and irate. So they put him in a sleeping bag inside of a tent and they had an alarm pinned to the zipper that would go off if he tried to get out. They claimed that he had a couple panic attacks before midnight. That staff says they checked on him a couple times through the evening and that he was fine. But when they found him the next morning around 7.45 a.m., he was unresponsive. The boy was actually found on his back on the floor. He had his knees in the air with his pants and underwear off and the pants and underwear were up near his shoulder. All he had on was his t-shirt and his hoodie. This article done by NBC News interviewed 14 former campers as well as three former counselors. And it looks like there have been a ton of concerns about this camp long before this death. This is Caroline. She was 14 years old in 2013 when she went to Trails Carolina. She says that her parents paid to have two strangers basically kidnap her in the middle of the night and take her to this camp. Of the 14 people that were interviewed, they all said the same thing, that basically their day started off at this camp with a strip search that was done by a staff member and sometimes without wearing underwear. One of the staff members interviewed claimed that the strip search was done in case they had drugs or other things on their possession, but she said anything that they came with from home was immediately taken from them. Another child who was 13 at the time named Lily went to this camp in 2018 when she was kicked out of her middle school. She said after the strip search, they gave you basically a uniform to wear that everyone else had worn. And she said the main thing she remembers is the stench. She said that they reeked of BO and of urine. And at the time, she didn't realize why. Lily claims that she soon realized why they smelled of BO and urine. She said it's because they were only allowed to shower but once a week and that they were actually regulated and restricted on their bathroom breaks. She said because of this, most of the kids would just wet themselves. Another camper recounted that when she arrived, she had no idea why she was being sent there. And she said it took them three days for the counselors to finally give her a letter from her parents. She was forced to read the letter in front of all the other campers, which she said was normal procedure for everyone else as well. And it basically was from her parents listing all the reasons why she was bad and had to go to this camp. Seven of the former participants that were interviewed said that they would make you actually sleep in something they referred to as a burrito. They said it was a tarp that was folded tightly around a sleeping bag so you couldn't get out and that a staff member would actually sleep beside you so they could stop you if you tried to get out. Allegedly, the camp says they've stopped using this burrito last year and that now they use this tent that they put the sleeping bag in with this lock on the outside. And they claim that the tent like weatherproof covers to support the psychological and emotional well-being of the children. Zoe also attended the camp and says that the only way you could contact or have any communication with your family was through letters. And she said the staff would read the letters first and if they didn't like something, they'd remove it. And the staff actually admitted to this in court. No. Zoe, who was also a former camper, says that the only way you could communicate with family members was through letters. And she said that if you wrote something in the letter that the camp didn't like, they screened it and they would take it out. And the camp actually admitted to this in a court filing. This was not the first death at this camp. A young boy had died a couple years earlier. He had allegedly left the camp, had climbed a tree, fallen out, broken his hip, and was found two weeks later dead in a river. Now, there are a ton of people that want to get these camps shut down, including Paris Hilton. And the article listed a couple other issues from other camps, including one in Wyoming, where allegedly two programs were making teens do heavy farm work for them and allegedly humiliating punishments as well. There was also a girls camp that was called Circle of Hope Girls Ranch in Missouri, and they allegedly had a ton of allegations of abuse against them, leading to hundreds of charges against the owners. And of course, there was another camp in Utah that had deaths of children as well.